Hey everyone, Mother Nature is unleashing her wrath with a red tide and a cricket invasion. And students are left on their own after a popular school closes without warning. Plus, producer Carleon Jones joins me to give her highs and lows from the Beyonce concert. It's Tuesday, September 26, 2023. I'm Rahil Ramzan Ali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Okay, so you ended up going to the Beyonce concert. How was it, first of all? Because this is the biggest story. Mm -hmm. I need to get your highlights. Come on, tell me. Honestly, the concert, it was very beautiful overall. Like, she is an amazing performer. Her voice, 10 out of 10. Like, I was amazed. I was blown aback by it because she was up there singing with the mic on the entire time. Like, no tracks behind, pretty much. And I was just blown away. It was beautiful. But I do have a little gripe about it. Can I talk to y'all? Can I? Okay. (laughs) Ooh, a gripe to start the show. Okay, spicy. Come on, give it to me. So I got my tickets last minute because I went to the Drake concert, which was also last week. Those tickets were expensive for Drake already. So I was just like, am I going to go to the Beyonce concert or not? But I was just kind of like, you know, I want to go. We don't know when she's going to have another concert. So let me go ahead and go. Right. So I don't know if it's because I got my tickets last minute or what, but the way that the stage was set up, if you were like on the sides of the stage, you couldn't fully see what was going on. And it was kind of frustrating to me because I wanted to see the full screen and up close and personal view of everything. And I, I was in the 300 section, so that shouldn't be like a bad view, you know, like. That's just one step up from the 100s because the way it's set up in the stadiums. But yeah, like I had like a side profile view and those tickets were too expensive. I feel like for me not to get the full experience, like I really want to go see it again, but I'm not paying for it again. But yeah, (laughs) I didn't get the full experience. From my understanding and of all my friends who were there, they were Instagramming live, which thank you, by the way, saved me 500 bucks because I (laughs) watched a lot of the concert just on Instagram live and the sound was pretty good. Mm -hmm. But it was just a flat screen in the back, right? So it wasn't mm-hmm. a rotating stage or anything. So it was exactly. just a one angled view, which, yeah, that does suck if you're sitting on the sides. And I know you got your tickets last minute. So I'm sure people are like, hey, Carly, you should have thought about this a little bit. Mm-hmm. But for those people who are like, hey, these are these look to be pretty good seats. Even if you're in the 100s, if you're sitting on the sides, you can't see. Exactly. And my friends who were also sitting in the same section as me, they got their tickets months ago. I mean, like when Beyonce released the tickets, they got them like that same week. So for them, it was just kind of like they still got to see the sides. I mean, we had a good time. It was like I said, it was a great concert. She put on a show for sure. And everybody in the world seemed to be there. But yeah, it was kind of like a disadvantage because versus like going to the Drake concert, he had the the screen that like rotated around. So everybody in the whole arena got to see it. For the Beyonce one, there was literally like that flat screen. And then behind the flat screen, there was nobody there. They shut down like almost half the arena kind of, or like 25% of it, let's say that. But if you were on that edge like us, like, yeah, all we got was the side profile. You had to like squint, you know? (laughs) So they didn't use the in-house screens at NRG, like the the football one, the huge screen in the middle? No, no, it was nothing. It was just that plain screen that she had across and it went like from one side to the other side. It was huge. So like it covered a lot of people. I'm pretty sure this is just a complaint from the few hundreds of people that were probably Mm. on the sides. But just like you said, if I'm in the 100s and I paid hundreds of dollars for this, like it's crazy. It's a little crazy. So I was so fascinated by the ticket prices all weekend long and I was just trying to see (laughs) how much they were. Mm-hmm. At one point, they got down to 370 mm-hmm. on the Sunday show, like a couple hours before. And here's the most fascinating tidbit. I was looking at a website the entire time, right? Mm-hmm. At 8 o'clock, they shot up to about 800 bucks because the concert started oh and the demand was so high, everyone waited and the supply was low because tickets had sold, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it shot up there. But then even at 11 o'clock, when it was about 30 minutes left, for the show, right? It was mm-hmm. a two and a half hour show, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tickets were still $175. You could still get in with about 30 minutes left for $175. I know. Oh, it's a crazy. random fact. I am fascinated by ticket prices. I just love it for like any major event. I will sit there and just every couple of minutes just check what the price is. But that's yeah. just me. I'm weird. I know. 
Okay, <laughs> big moments from Beyonce weekend. The economic impact, Carly. The city is expected to have an economic impact of millions of dollars, according to KHOU. Now, hotels are sold out, of course, and this also ends a big run of concerts. You mentioned Drake last week. Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift was here for three days. So the city has gotten a huge economic boom from just concerts and Queen B wraps it all up, which is awesome. Yeah. You know, Beyonce's from Houston. So it's like whenever she came here, and this is one of the last concerts that she's going to have, like she's almost done. I think she has like two more cities and the, the world tour is over. So everyone was here. Like it was huge. It was just so many people. And two nights in a row of that many people is just amazing. Like, oh my gosh, so many people flew down here specifically for this show. Like, it's amazing. That's crazy. So I saw Jay-Z was there, mm-hmm. Destiny's Child, not only the members that we know, but the older members as well, they were there. Mm-hmm. There was a whole list of people there. The biggest one to me, and she's been on tour with Beyonce, but seeing Blue Ivy come out oh, yeah. on Sunday night, it is crazy how much she looks like Beyonce. Yeah, it is amazing. I was there Saturday and she was out that night too. And Megan Thee Stallion came out too, which was so cute. Oh my gosh, I love that. But there was like uh, people screaming the whole time. The concert started about like 9 p.m., I think. And every second you kept hearing people in the audience like, ah! And then like you're looking around trying to see what's going on. It's like Lizzo, it's Jay Z, it's Bum B. It's just like all these oh huge God. artists. Yeah, and everybody's just freaking out the whole time. So it was like, yeah, it was a lot of energy in there. It was so cool. I'm so glad that you got a chance to go. And I also saw that our girl Aunt Rochelle made it to the floor as well on Saturday night. The she was floor? out there with her. <laughs> yeah, she got what? up there and she was out there having the time of her life. So that is awesome to see. So shout out to Queen B for the economic impact. Let's get to our biggest story outside of Queen B, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you got for us? So, oh my gosh, y'all. So the Art Institute of Houston has abruptly shut down. Like so abruptly that it's kind of fishy to me. When I read this story, I was like, what? So on Friday, they sent out an email to the students and the staff basically announcing that they're permanently shutting down the school effective, get this, September 30th. That is this Saturday. Mm. And so I'm like, what the heck is happening? Like, you know, but Houston's not alone in this. There's other campuses in Texas, like Austin, Dallas, and San Antonio that are also shutting down. And Miami, Atlanta, Tampa, and Virginia Beach, those schools are also shutting down. It's just so crazy to me because these people have already replaced the website with a school closure information page. So like, yeah, they're not playing no games. It's like you can go there and get your transcripts and tax forms and things like that. But they literally wrote in the email, we encourage you to complete your education at another school. The Art Institute, we're working with numerous partners and affiliates to transfer students. Can you imagine this? I mean, I mean, yeah, like, think about it. Let's say we're at UT and one morning we wake up like, hey, guess what? This school is closing and you're on your own and all the money that you paid will kind of figure it out. Financial aid information, transcripts. It might take a while, but we're going to figure this thing out. But you are on your own. That is scary. What I mean, what is the cause of this? Why did all of these schools just shut down out of nowhere? So what they're saying is that it's kind of unclear completely about what they're doing or why they're doing this, but they did contribute some of it to COVID-19. And this is also not the first time this has happened with the Art Institute. They've also reported like 18 campuses closing like in 2018 or so, um, and that was due to low enrollment numbers. So I'm Assuming that this is something similar happening again, where they're just kind of having to shut things down because not enough people are enrolled in the college. But regardless, it's like you put so much hard work and money into these schools. Not everything transfers over for you to be able to like finish your degree at the same amount of time that you're supposed to at the Art Institute versus another school. And they also haven't even listed any partnering institutions yet. They haven't even linked anything for people to go in, like be like, okay, let me apply here real quick. No, that hasn't even happened yet. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's so fresh, right? Like they're probably working through it right now. And that just shows you that they probably didn't think this through too much because if you were Mm -hmm. contemplating this for a while, Mm -hmm. you would have all that information up there. You would have your next steps. 
you would have the website built out like mm-hmm. here's the request this here's where you need to go to transfer stuff over whatever it seems like it was just like they woke up and like okay we just can't sustain this let's shut every city down that is scary here's a fun fact what i always wanted to attend the art institute of houston i don't oh, know wow. why <laughs> yeah just growing up we would always see commercials for it and i was like oh that's got to be the coolest place to go to school <laughs> what did you want to go for what were you going to major in I don't know. No, I had no major in mind. I just wanted to be in the school. Okay. Like, I just thought it was the coolest thing. I'm not an artist by any means, but mm-hmm. I just like, I, I was like, I need to be there. That's so cool. Like, they make it seem like a fun school. Yeah, and this is did. where all the creatives go. But I did it. I went to UT instead. Yeah. Good but choice. it might be a good thing. I was about to say, because you <laughs> yeah. might have not, you might have not made it through. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my gosh. That There's so scary, many people losing uh, their jobs. Imagine that. Like, like they could at least gave the teachers a warning. That's my thought process. Like at least yeah. the professors, but you know. Man, yeah. I can't even imagine what the students are going through. Best of luck to all the students and professors out there. Hope mm-hmm. you find something and I hope everything transfers over because that is a money suck, right? Like you mm-hmm. put all that money in and your credits don't transfer over and then you're screwed. That is scary. Okay. Yeah. My biggest story of the week, uh, if you were planning on going to Galveston, now that the weather is a little bit cooler, you might have to stay away because for the first time in seven years, we have a red tide. Now, what is a red tide? Mm-hmm. It's a natural phenomenon that occurs when algae in the Gulf begins producing large amounts of rust colored toxin. Now, this isn't Mm. dangerous for humans. Now, you will get like an annoying feeling if you breathe it up. But the reason this is not good is because this algae bloom kills fish and then they wash up on the shore and you'll just see dead fish. And that's not healthy at Mm. all to be around. I actually saw one of my friends was at the beach and he posted a ton of videos of sharks, like baby sharks, a bunch of fish just all over. And he said the stench was disgusting and we've had a big fish kill off already because of how hot it's been and the oxygen levels go up in the gulf so fish just die and they wash up ashore but this red algae bloom the red tide isn't going to help now stay away there aren't official closures yet but everyone is saying just kind of be mindful because it's probably not the safest place to be right now yeah, that sounds terrible. Like, oh my God, a bunch of dead fish everywhere. But it's crazy because this is the first time Galveston's probably had water that was a different color besides brown in years. But, you know. Oh, that, stop. It's, it was blue earlier point. this year. Come on. Don't take shots at our Galveston. I'm going to have to replay the Galveston Doesn't Suck episode on you one more time. I don't know. I still need to see it. I, I haven't had the proof yet that it turns wa- I mean, turns blue. It was just two weeks ago. It, two weeks did ago. You not, yeah. No. Two weeks ago. It was like blue. It was crazy. Okay. Okay. You have pictures? Yeah, it's all over Instagram. Okay. I'll go look. I'll go look. Y'all. Yeah, go look up Galveston's official account. It was all over there, Carly. <laughs> over here sure. taking They're shots at my beloved Galveston. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I've only gone one time this summer. So bad. Oh, so wow. bad. Okay, let's go to rapid fire because there are a lot of cool stories that have happened and I want to get your thoughts on this. This is the wildest thing to me, okay? Mm -hmm. You know I'm a science nerd. I love NASA, everything that it represents. But check this out. NASA just brought back a 4.5 billion old sample from an asteroid to Earth. Now, it's going to be in Houston pretty soon to get it all researched and all that. But OSIRIS-REx, the mothership, rocketed away on a $1 billion mission in 2016. It reached the asteroid Bennu two years later, and it used a long stick vacuum in space, grabbed rubble from the space rock in 2020, and it just got back to Earth. Now, the full trip of this spacecraft and all this, 4 billion miles, Carly. Wow. It traveled 4 billion miles to get the sample back. Now, why is this important? Preserve building blocks from the dawn of our solar system. The samples will help scientists better understand how Earth and life form, providing an extraordinary glimpse of 4.5 billion years ago, according to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. How wild is that? That is amazing. It always amazes me, first of all, like how long missions take. Like you wouldn't think, okay, I'm sending this out and it's not going to come back until 2023. That's crazy. Like, wow, that's amazing. Four billion miles is amazing. But then on top of that, getting 4.5 billion years ago, like information from that long ago, 
even more mind blowing. And I'm so interested in like history and how things were formed and how things are made. So I think this is like super cool and I can't wait to see what they find from it, honestly. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. Like imagine how everything had to go perfectly right for this Mm -hmm. sample to get back traveling that many miles to execute it. It just shows you how genius we are as Mm -hmm. humans. And shout out to NASA and the whole team because that is incredible. Okay, let's move to restaurants for a second, Carly. I want to get your thoughts on this one. On average, Texans tip 18.8% of their bill at all restaurants, okay? But when you break it down, we tip 19.2% at full-service restaurants. So think about places where you're sitting down and the waiter, waitress, they depend on the tips. Now, when you break it down more, we tip 16.4% at quick-service restaurants. So think about the faster ones where you're going in and out. You're not sitting there the whole time. We came in at number 42 overall in terms of states that tip well or don't tip well. California was last in tipping according to Toast, oh, which wow. is the company that you know does the credit payments and runs operations for restaurants in their latest report. Are you surprised by how low we are when it comes to tipping at number 42? Yeah, I am actually pretty surprised. But When I'm like thinking about the numbers, I'm like, maybe it's because Texas is so large and we have so many big cities where things are like moving so fast paced versus other like states are more slower paced. So I guess like you sit there, you probably go to these restaurants more often and you might have relationships with the waiters like, you know, like, oh, this is my favorite waiter and things like that. So maybe you might tip more in other states. But it is amazing because like we have a huge restaurant culture here. And I know like me, the way I grew up, like my mom has always made it a really big point to make sure you tip good. And I'm a very generous tipper because I If I feel like you did a great job, I feel like you should be rewarded for that, especially since people aren't getting paid much to be there. So it's like they're living off the tips. So I want to make sure that I'm, you know, providing the right way for a good service. But yeah, Texas, y'all need to get it together, y'all. We need to step it up just a little bit. Now, we are above the national average, which is good, but we need to step it up just a little bit. Now, I will Mm -hmm. say my tipping habits have definitely changed when it comes to quick service restaurants, right? Like if I'm running Mm -hmm. in and I placed an order and I'm literally just picking it up, I'm not going to tip like 25%. I'm just not going to do it. I'm probably going to give you the minimum of 15%. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, so like, I'm sorry. I know that kind of sucks because they still have to put in the work and all that. I get that. But that's just how my habits have changed. I'll just give you that minimum 15%. But -hmm. when you go to a sit down restaurant, when you're there for an hour plus, yeah, like you, you tip you know, and the service is good, you tip well. Now, if the service is bad, I still say you tip the minimum, right? Mm -hmm. Because it does matter. And then you give some feedback to the person or their manager or whatever. And just don't go to Google and blast them, please, because that sucks. That's not going to do anything. So yeah, like tipping habits have changed a little bit. So I kind of understand where we are. Yeah, but I think like tipping is like a whole can of worms too. Like on the internet, there's so many debates about how you should tip or if Mm -hmm. you should tip this much or that much, or some people don't tip at all. And I think it's a little crazy, but you know, it, it is a whole can of worms right there. Okay. Let's go to the last one. I'm going to the world of sports real quickly because I need you to sacrifice something or give up something because our beloved Astros are struggling, Carly. Mm. Now, they can still make the playoffs. They have six games left, and the Astros need to get something going because their last nine games, they went two and seven against really bad teams, and Mm. they were in the lead of our division, the AL West, and now they are no longer in the lead because the Rangers are again in the lead, and we need some help. We need a sacrifice. We need to do something. So, Carly, what are you sacrificing to make sure our Houston Astros get to the playoffs with six games left. Ooh, okay. This is a little tough. Um, (laughs) Let me think. Let me think. Okay. First of all, I believe in y'all. Y'all can do this. But maybe let's try red meat. I feel like I should sacrifice red meat for a while until they make it all the way to the playoffs. Like when it's official, then I might can have like a burger or something like that day. But until then, we can just, yeah, cut it off and... 
I'll eat healthier. It could only be a couple of days because they do play Seattle, which is the, the team is right behind us in the wild card. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you sweep Seattle and all of a sudden you're in the playoffs and you're locked in. So it could be a couple okay. of days or they could just miss the playoffs and you will never eat red meat again. OK, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Actually, at, at the end of the day, it could be a win win because I'll be eating healthier regardless. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I saw the funniest tweet was somebody said, are Houston Astros are blowing this because they just want to spend one Halloween with their kids because they mm. never get to hang out with them because they're always in the World Series. And this is a good problem to have. But mm-hmm. come on, can we can we spend some time with the family? They've been playing baseball for so long, all the way into October for so many years now. They're just like, hey, you know what? We're kind of tired of this. We want yeah. to be with our family. We want to go take fall pictures. Yeah, they probably are tired. I mean, that does sound exhausting. Baseball has one of the longest seasons, so I can definitely understand being like, okay, I need a break. I need a moment, <laughs> you know? I need a regroup here, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Since you already got your gripe out of the way, I just have a quick one. Okay. I'm not a big like anti-bug guy. Bugs don't creep me out too much. I won't touch them. I'm not going to pick up bugs, but if I see a bug, I don't freak out. My, my daughter does. She is the worst. Like she will freak out if she sees the smallest bug anywhere. But the annual cricket outbreak is happening, Carly. And I just want to let everyone know that this is a time where crickets come out after the first big rain after the summer season. So get ready. You're going to see crickets all over. We actually, I don't know if you saw this video, but during the Ken Paxton trial, somebody tweeted out a guy cleaning up crickets at the Capitol because there are so many like he just had a big blower and he's just blowing away all these crickets because there's that many there and also females by the way they can lay between 150 to 400 eggs that will hatch later in the spring so don't make me that's gonna be a lot of fun as well but cricket season is here leave your lights off if you don't like them because they are attracted to light so I know you're gonna love this one Carly No. So fun fact, (laughs) I am not scared of a lot of bugs. Like I have a cousin who freaks out if she sees any type of bug, kind of like your daughter. And I'm usually the one that if like she has a bug in her house, I'll come get it out. Right. But when it comes to crickets, I am scared of them. I don't know why. I think it's because they can like jump and move at you. Like, oh my God, I can't do crickets. No. Oh my God. Not a cricket. I don't like frogs and I don't like lizards. Those are the three things that just Ooh, just keep me, just get my skin. Well, how about this car. one? This is also the time of the year where baby snakes are coming out. So there's Ooh. that little cherry on top for you to sounds end the like show. Sounds like time to stay in the house. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> it's time to stay indoors. <laughs> yeah, you've been outside for too long now, all right? <laughs> so right. it's time to stay inside, avoid the crickets. I love it. Hey, Carly, <laughs> thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. It was. Thank you, Rahil. <laughs> That was producer Carly on Jones. You can find all the stories we discussed with the links in our show notes. Hey, what stupid questions do you have about Houston? We're going to be answering them for Ask a Stupid Question Day on Thursday. So send them in right now via the contact info in our show notes. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening. And I hope you learned something new. I saw on Instagram, she was down there with her, um, what is it, tramble? Trambol- no, what's it called? What's that thing she carries around? Why am I um, blanking up? Um, um, tripod? Is it a tripod? No, no, no. It's just that instrument that you keep a beat with. Oh, um, um, tram. I mean, uh, oh, I know what you're talking Not about. Not a trampoline, because I want to say trampoline really badly. <laughs> Not a trampoline, but the the thingy that you do this like with, right? Yeah. Uh, tambourine. Tambourine is the word. Yes. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha